if you think about the model of the placebo, Craig, I mean, why is it that you can give someone a sugar pill or a saline injection or do some sham surgery or procedure, and a certain percentage of those people get better? And if you would think that it's some external substance that they're believing in, but it really is they're believing in the thought, the possibility of themselves actually getting better. And the placebo really is about being healed by thought alone. So if you understand the science and the physiology of how the placebo works, the next, next question that's a good question to ask is, can you teach people how to do it? Can you teach them how to move into new states of being and change from the inside and be able to produce the same physiological responses as if they took the drug or took the placebo? Because the person, for example, who's taking an antidepressant or who's taking a pill to reduce pain, they're producing the same chemistry in their body as if they took the pain reliever, as, as if they took the antidepressant. So the body begins to make its own pharmacy of chemicals to match the exact chemical that they were taking. That's, that's, if people really begin to understand this, then they start to realize maybe that they don't really need too many things outside of them to change their inner states. Well, it basically comes down to, maybe you could kind of explain the science, uh, you know, that I'm sure this is a a semester course at university, but maybe a little bit of the science behind what's happening in our bodies, because basically, and there's a little bit from your book, uh, it's, it says here, the majority of genes estimated range from 75 to 80% or 85% are turned off and on by signals from our environment, including the environment of thoughts, beliefs, and emotions that we are cultivating in our brains. So it seems like we, with our minds, what we're doing when we have these uh, placebo effects, when we're... Um, or miracle healings or faith healings that we're literally turning our genes on and off with our thoughts, our faith, our, our emotions. Is that correct? Yeah. So think about this. You know, you think about 60 to 70,000 thoughts in one day. Out of those 60 to 70,000 thoughts you think in one day, 90% of those thoughts are the same thoughts as this day before. So the same thoughts will always lead to the same choices. The same choices will always create the same behaviors. The same behaviors will produce the same experiences, and the same experiences will create the same emotions. And those same emotions will drive the very same thoughts. And it's called an identity or a personality. And your biology, your neurocircuitry, your chemistry, your hormonal expression, and even the genes that you express are equal to how you think, you how you act, and how you feel. So... If you keep doing the same things every single day, there's no new information coming from the environment to begin to signal any new gene in any new way. Change it with a new thought, a new choice, a new behavior, a new experience, or a new emotion, and there are physical and chemical changes that will begin to take place in the brain and in the body as well as in the genes. So when we talk about the placebo response and people heal themselves of... Uh, um, arthritic changes in their knee or they heal themselves of heart conditions or they heal themselves of asthma or whatever the uh, pain. Uh, it's, a, it's an important thing for people to understand that they can't consciously do that. In other words, they can't consciously make their cartilage grow back in their knee. They can't elevate their dopamine levels 200 times like they did when they took a placebo. So then what happens is, is that a person is marrying a thought a new possible reality, a thought, an image that they could be better, and they're marrying it with an elevated emotion of inspiration, of gratitude, of joy, of possibility. And when you, when you combine a clear intention with an elevated emotion, you move into a new state of being. And that's what begins to program the autonomic nervous system to begin to make those chemicals to match to your very intention. Well, I, I, what I find fascinating about this this whole subject, and and what I find I love about your book is you have example of after example and study after study, of of this, actually working in people's lives. But the one that really blew my mind, I, I think we've all heard stories of the you know people uh, recovering from cancer or maybe even uh, their their miraculous tumors disappearing. But there was a study of uh, some elderly gentlemen, and and forgive me if I'm getting some of the details wrong, but uh, some el elderly gentlemen, they went on this five-day retreat up into the mountains or something, and they went to this small town, and, and they dressed, the people who were in this, this study, this retreat, dressed the town as if it was 20, 30 years ago, 
and by and they did all the things that these uh, gentlemen would would have done 20 30 40 years ago and by the end of the week these guys had physically become younger not only in their heads but in their bodies measurably younger in their bodies yeah it's a great study by Ellen Langer a Harvard researcher and I love the study because what they told the men is to play that uh, pretend that they were 22 years younger. And they set up the environmental conditions to remind them of what it would be like to see Marilyn Monroe or Mickey Mantle or the Kennedys or listen to certain music and see certain dress codes. And it helped them to remind them of how they were 22 years ago. And then they were to pretend for the entire time during the retreat that they were actually 22 years younger. They did physiological markers on them before. They measured their finger lengths, their their toe lengths. They measured their cognition, their range of motion, their height, their weight. They measured their eyesight. They measured all these things. And that just in five days, they had physical changes in their body. They were epigenetically signaling new genes in new ways by moving into a different state of being. So it begs the question, who are you pretending to be? Or better yet, who are you pretending not to be? And so by teaching people simple formulas and being able to do this, in workshops and seminars around the world, we're beginning to measure some significant changes, just like those men that were part of the study. Well, it, go, it goes in a reverse, uh, and it sort of ties into the story I told about uh, Sam Lindy, the, the guy who died of cancer who didn't really have any cancer in his system. If you can think positively about yourself and your health and get better, it would... Uh, it would have to go the other way. If you think negatively about your health and yourself and your body, that you're going to get sick, you're going to stay sick, and my God, you might even kill yourself by thought alone. That's got to be possible, just like the Sam Lindy story. Well, Sam's a great example. I start the book off with that because I want people to realize how powerful thought is. And if everybody around you thinks you're dying and everybody around you thinks you have a disease and they're treating you like that, like you have the disease and you believe you have the disease and you took the voodoo curse because you accepted, believed, and surrendered without analysis to your diagnosis and all of the symptoms that are correlated with it and you signed on the dotted line for a certain procedure, and you didn't think you could get better without that procedure, it's the same exact thing. But instead of in Sam's case, he ultimately died by thought alone. People get sick by thought alone as well. Okay, so this begs the question, what, what do we do? Uh, you know, if I'm, I got a stressful job, uh, you know, I have teenagers in the house who are rolling their eyes at me at everything I say, uh, I'm frustrated, I'm, I'm disappointed. Uh, what, what do I do? I'm getting, I, I see that down the road, I am going to get sick. Uh, you know, just like my, my parents did. I have, I've even set myself up with a lot of cues from my family because there's lots of diabetes in my family or cancer or what have you. What can I do to, to change this around? It's obvious people can use their minds to get better. How do I do that? Well, I mean, knowledge is the precursor to experience. I mean, the more knowledge you have, the more prepared you are for an experience. This is a time in history, Craig, where people don't only want to know, but they want to know how. So the more you understand and the more you learn the way things really are, and the more you question the way things really are, and the more you decide what's valuable and important to you, and the more you become conscious of your unconscious thoughts your unconscious habits and emotions that have become so familiar to you, and then get out, get out of your resting state and begin to really change your own state of being and begin to experiment with it. So if you understand that emotional intelligence is shortening the refractory period of your emotional reactions to your teenagers, you may not be able to control everything in your external environment, but you can certainly practice controlling your inner states. If you know that thoughts have something to do with your destiny, and that your personality creates your personal reality, you may wake up every morning a little earlier and decide who you want to be when you open your eyes and create something in your future and see if it actually shows up. If you have an illness or a sickness and you're living by anger or fear every single day, maybe it's that emotion that's got you in trouble in the first place. And maybe you work on becoming conscious of the things in your life that make you go unconscious emotionally and then decide to condition your body to a new state of mind begin to create more elevated emotions and signal new genes in new ways. 
to experiment with these concepts means you become the scientist with your own body. You become your own genetic engineer. Okay, you just said.